so in this video we are going to see how we can work with large objects or lobs using a by restful application programming model working with lobs are uh, nothing but working with uh, different kind of medias that includes excel file pdf file txt file so uploading a large object and media such as excel or image through your application is a very common business requirement and uh, with the latest release of sap btp abap 2208 rap framework is now supporting large objects as well because now the rap also supports o data streams streams are uh, you can say a media resource is an unstructured piece of data or you can call it as a stream so this stream is nothing new this is a very old concept and uh, this streams could be any document images or videos to handle the large object we need to use certain different annotations which uh, which allows or which uh, provide a place to upload different kind of files or attachments in the wrap application and uh, that annotation is a semantic large object this is the annotation which we are going to use to make our wrap application capable of uploading the files let's understand at a high level what large objects are and uh, how they are actually structured so if you see this small diagram here this is a full you can say a large objects and uh, which uh, actually contains three different parts the very first part is attachment then mime type and the file name so the field attachment itself contains the large object and uh, this is in the format of raw string and uh, the mime type second part is contains the content type of the attachment so this content type could be a type of your file or type of your media it could be pdf txt excel or any image file or any other kind of media now the third part is the file name and uh, this file name is been taken by the actual file which user uploads using rap so rap framework itself take care of the file name along with this semantic object there are different properties which we can attach to make our uh, file upload more meaningful or uh, adding more features to it for example you can you can have certain properties to enable whether you want to open the file in the browser or whether you want to download the file when user clicks on the file name which has been uploaded and uh, we can also apply some restrictions while uploading a file for example i also want to upload the file with a specific extension so those kind of restrictions also we can apply using the large object semantic annotation and uh, all the error handling and everything in this case is taken care by the rep framework itself we no need to do any kind of coding for that so this was a little high level of what large objects are now let's see practically how we can implement large objects using a web rest full application programming model for a demo purpose i have already created a package here and uh, i have also created two different database tables before continuing this our scenario is like we have a student table which we always use for our demo so we have the same kind of table available with different fields different fields so this is what the student table look like first name last name age course and all those common fields 
and uh, we also have a new table here which is attachment table and uh, we can say we will be uploading resume for the student for each student and uh, you can upload multiple resume so it means we will be having multiple file upload scenario in this we will not be having a single file upload but we will provide a capability to upload the multiple files for a single student in this this is a straightforward table but if we see the attachment table here we have a special field available which is attachment and uh, as we have already seen in our ppt the the core data or the attachment is actually will be saved inside this field and uh, the type of this field is uh, a raw string which we have already seen this is a very important and uh, if this type is not there then the file upload will not work properly so these are the two tables which we have created very simple and straightforward now the next thing which i have already created here uh, is uh, two interface views for each table one for header table and the attachment table let's see how are those looks like currently so this is the interface view name here and we are reading data from this table header table we also have since we have created an interface view for attachment so we are doing a composition here with that interface view and uh, provided an alias name with attachments and uh, whatever this header table having fields i have all the fields available here with added annotations uh, front end ui annotations basically and finally since we are doing a composition i am making this as a public this association as a public here okay so this was the student interface view the header one now let's see the attachment interface view here this is also very simple and straightforward we have this interface from this table we are reading the data and we have done the association to parent with the header table here provided the alias underscore student and uh, putting a projection with id field of attachment and the id field of student and uh, all of these fields are from again the attachment table here there are some more annotations which we need to add here before this interface view will show the option to upload the files and uh, all of different fields onto our front end if you are not familiar with all of these options which we have written here the interface view or the association what is consumption or composition what are view entities we already have a full list available step by step guide where you can refer and uh, you can learn all of these things in a very simple and uh, step by step example we have created full application full fury application using these annotations and everything so if you are first time to this channel i would highly recommend you to go through that list as well so you it will be very easy for you to understand all of these things so now let's start technical thing here i am currently in attachment interface view and uh, this is our attachment field here we will be adding some new annotations which uh, will help us to work with the large objects so very first annotation which i am going to use here is attachment this is just a caption nothing special here now the special annotation is semantic dot large object and uh, 
in this large object we will be setting certain properties the first properties is a mime type and uh, it will be mime type then file name would be file name here and the third property is uh, content disposition preferences we will see what exactly this property does for now let's set a value to inline okay so that's it uh, this is the main annotation which will which is responsible for showing the option to upload the file let's activate it our interface view for attachment is now active so we are ready with the header interface view and the attachment interface view now as a next step we are going to create a projection views for each of these two and uh, we will be adding some more annotations or say ui annotations basically for header and for attachment page let's create a projection view for our header table so select the sorry the interface view for header right click on the interface view and uh, select a new data definition and uh, provide the projection view name i will change it to p and uh, projection view for header table copy this name and click on next select the transport now here we need to select a uh, entity projection view so we will be selecting a defined projection view here and uh, click on finish we got our projection view and you see we got all of the fields as well automatically now let's hit enter here and uh, what is the error it is saying the root keyword is missing so let's put a root keyword here and uh, everything is good now it is saying transactional provider contract okay so this is a new thing which we need to add here we need to add a provider contract and since we are doing a transactional operation we will be using transactional query okay so everything is now clean let's now start adding some of the annotations here very first annotation which we are going to use is uh, we will be adding a packet here so that would be ui annotation so ui dot and uh, inside this we will be adding different more properties the very first property is id which would be student data for example and uh, this purpose is standard now provide some label for this um, let's say student data the next property is type and uh, type would be your identification reference and uh, what position we want this to be on 10th position it means first position okay and uh, if you are not familiar please go through the other listing where we have seen all of these annotations how it works and uh, all about these annotations now let's copy this again so this would be 
upload section and uh, purpose is standard let's change the label to upload attachments and uh, the type would be this time is line item references okay and uh, position would be 20 and uh, target element would be underscore attachments that's it now let's do a small formatting here now the next annotation which we need to add here is those are all normal annotations which uh, we are going to add here at the rate ui and we are going to add multiple here let's add a selection field with position 10 and then line item position 10 and i also want this key field to be shown on object page so let's put 10 here okay now let me add all of these annotations quickly to all of the other fields okay so i have added all of these annotations which are fairly simple and straightforward i want to show the columns on the table or the same column on the identification fields that's what i have just added here let's format our code and uh, save it i'm not activating it for now one thing which we need to do here is or is a part of our requirement is that i want to navigate from attachments to the student header table and from header to the attachments table basically parent and child relationship so for that i am adding here a redirect to composition child and uh, that composition child would be our uh, projection view for the attachment interface view so let's copy this one and uh, paste it and change the name to p so this projection view we haven't created for the attachment interface view but we will be creating this soon so copy this and uh, save the projection view now let's create another projection view for the attachment to create the projection view again we will follow the same step we will right click on the interface view of attachment a new definition and uh, provide the name with p and uh, attachment copy the name and click on next so this is already exist let's uh, change something here copy this click on next add into the transport and uh, this time as well we will be selecting define projection view click on finish so our projection view name is this let's before continuing let's change it here and uh, save now come back here and uh, our projection view is ready no changes are needed here apart from some of the ui annotations here like we have added some annotation in this projection view let's add similar kind of annotations onto 
the attachment as well so let me copy this and we will be using similar kind of annotations here we do not want the attachment so label would be attachment information it would be standard identification reference and uh, position is 10 so that's it nothing much is needed here now let's copy the ui annotation as well to show on to the front end and uh, that would be for the attachment id field here we do not want any selection criteria for this so let's remove it and now keep copying for the attachment id then the ui field 20 20 and then the comment field as well make it 30 and the attachment which would be at the line or at position 4 let's format the code quickly and now like we have added here redirect to composition child similarly we will redirect it to parent as well so we will write redirect to parent and uh, this will contain our parent projection view name here and that's it so now our projection views are ready let's save all and uh, click on activate all objects click on this and select the projection views click on activate okay so our objects are activated both the projection views are active and ready to use now so as a third step or as a next step once we have the interface and projection views already now let's create the behavior definition for uh, the student header for that on the data definition or the views right click on the header interface view and uh, click on new behavior definition since this is always one to one mapping here we we cannot change the name here and uh, we are currently using the managed scenario managed implementation scenario click on next and uh, finish so we have got our uh, behavior definition here for student header table interface view let's make some changes to this behavior definition and uh, so very first change which we need to do here is adding a draft cap capability why we need a draft capability is uh, since uh, v4 we will be using uh, odata v4 here and uh, without the draft capability edit or create options will not be available that's why we need to add a draft capability to this behavior definitions to add the draft capability we just need to write with draft now our application will use the draft and uh, the second thing let's add an alias name here since it's a student interface let's give a student name we already have got our persistent table name now to have the draft capability we also need to create a draft table and uh, for that add our draft table here and uh, 
let's put a name b underscore so it's going longer than 16 character okay so our draft table name is hdtab now the next thing which we need to do is lock master is okay authorization master we need to make it a global so we make it a go global the next thing which we need to add is total e tag so for total e tag we need to add local last change add field now we also need to open e tag master and the field would be last changed at and uh, see we got all of these methods automatically create update and delete we also seeing the association with attachment table and uh, for attachment association create operation will be available but we also want this to be draft capable so we will add with draft here so with this we can have a draft capability for attachment section as well now let's add some more things here we also want uh, numbering to be auto generated the key field numbering so let's add it for that we will be adding a field and uh, making numbering as managed means the wrap framework will be responsible to generate the next number next available number like auto generate number and uh, along with that i also want to make it as a read only i do not want anyone to make any change to this number and now which field i want auto generate i want an id field to be auto generated so this is done here now there are certain actions which we need to add those actions are uh, related to our draft functionality so those are all standard methods like edit and uh, let me action so edit is done now activate the next one is uh, discard and the next one is uh, resume and one mandatory action is uh, draft determination action which would be prepare so all of these is done uh, why it is giving an error here it's not a lock entity lock master and hence cannot be defined a detection lock master we have already defined a lock master here. it may be because we haven't created this draft table here so let's do one thing let's remove all of these for now and uh, first let's save it and uh, create this draft table double click on this now this will be a draft table add to transport and see our draft table is now ready here click on activate our draft table is now activated close this and now repaste all of the draft actions see now all of the errors are gone so you first need to activate your draft and then add all of these actions so you will not get any error now the only thing which is pending here in this definition is uh, mapping of the fields so for mapping we use mapping form and uh, what is the table name here it is for z student 
table close this and now we just need to map all of the fields available so first field is id and id would be mapped with id the second field is first name and uh, which would be mapped with first name the next is last name last name okay let me add all of these fields quickly okay so i have added all of these fields the mapping for all the fields here so now this behavior definition for header table is complete now everything is done now let's move to the attachment table here in the attachment table let's add very first thing let's add the alias for this and uh, since it's attachment so let's give it a name as attachment and uh, provide the persistent table name the persistent table name for our attachment is uh, attachment table this is the one close this provide here this is done now let's add the draft functionality draft table would be the draft table would be like uh, d underscore attachment so this is the draft table we have added now the log dependent by our parent which is a student and uh, authorization dependent by again parent now let's add the e tag master and the field would be last changed at we already have got update delete option the field id is again read only and uh, here we need to add association student but uh, i want a draft capability with this so i will write with draft here and uh, similarly we will finally be adding mapping for student table like this and let's add all of the fields which are available very first is attachment field which is attachment id then our main field which is attachment the next field is comments comments and uh, what's the next field is file name which is file name here and then what else we have we have id so id field is also done and uh, the last one is mime type so this mapping is also now completed now let's create the draft table for attachment next and finish now see we got our draft table for attachment as well let's activate it it's got activated so till now what we have done here is uh, we have created all of our tables four tables we have created interface view and projection view for each of these and then we also have created the behavior definition here for student header table now finally let's save our behavior definition and click on activate our behavior definition is now active everything looks good here 
the next step is uh, to create a behavior definition for projection as well now the projection inter projection view for the header is uh, looks like we have created with a similar name here this is our uh, projection view for header table ideally it should be hdr here but uh, that's fine so let's create a behavior definition for this header projection view right click on this and create a new behavior definition again this would be one to one mapping and uh, keep in mind this is a projection implementation type here click on next and click on finish so we have got our uh, behavior definition for projection as well there are no changes needed here just click on the activate our uh, object is now active so behavior definition for projection is also activated now so till now we have created behavior definition for both projection and uh, the interface view for header the next thing which we need to do is go to the projection view or the behavior sorry behavior definition for the interface view of header and uh, we need to create an implementation of this class here so click on this and uh, create a behavior implementation double click on this and click on next and click on finish so now our behavior implementation is created see let's click on load full content and uh, click on activate now our class is also active this is also done pretty much everything is now completed as a final step we now need to create a service definition now let's create a service definition and uh, for that let's uh, right click on uh, create new service definition provide a name here underscore service definition click on next and uh, click on next and create a service definition and finish now our service definition is created and uh, we have already exposed our attachment projection view now we also need to expose our student view so expose uh, student projection view which is this one we have done a typo here but that's okay click on activate so our service definition is now active the next step we need to create a service binding for this service definition so right click on the service definition and uh, click on new service binding now provide a name here service binding now the service binding which we are going to have is odata v4 ui version since we need a draft capability so for that we are using odata v4 ui click on next and finish so now we have got our service binding available here click on activate it is activated and now let's publish the service endpoints now our service binding is ready and uh, the local endpoints are already published here our service url is this one 
we are also seeing here entity set and all the associations which we have maintained in our interface views let's try to run this application and uh, this is our root entity double click on this and see our application is running so till now everything is good all the columns are visible here now let's try to create a record click on this create button our object page is also looks good so we have two fa two facets defined one for student data and another is for upload attachment let's put a student data here first name last name H is 33 computers course duration is five years status is active gender is M and uh, date of birth is 30 see our draft table is also getting updated automatically here now let's upload one attachment click on create provide a id for the field you can it's not mandatory always to provide this since we have a not null field and uh, we haven't made attachment id field as an auto generate that's why we are getting this pop-up if you made it uh, auto generate and managed then this pop-up will not be visible okay so click on continue okay so this uuid is also created and this is the id field for the attachments let's put some comment wrap upload test and see for the large with the large object annotation we are getting this option available here so click on this upload file button and uh, let's select one file which is a text file and our draft is also getting updated here click on apply and see we got our first file got uploaded in the draft version okay so we have added our student we have added a file as well now let's click on create our first record is also got created here go back click on go see we got our first record with the file upload operation and uh, this is our file if you want to see click on the file and uh, you will see the content as well here now let's try to upload another file but before that let me make some changes to the file let's create another a new file here let's try to upload another file here click on edit and uh, click on create let's give an id of 2 continue and uh, wrap upload 2 click on this option and select the second file here the draft is getting updated click on apply see we got our second file wrap upload 2.txt click on save our file got saved go back and we got one record which is having two different files uploaded so we have seen multiple file upload and let's open this new file let's see this file this has code in means our channel name close and click on this we got some other message going on here let's see what this message says please consider subscribing to my channel coding means and keep learning good stuffs close this and uh, let's reset so this is how we can code to work with the large objects in a full application programming model in uh, 
in the next video we will be seeing some more options which are available with the large objects annotation which contains a restriction of a specific file type and uh, like for now this when you click on the file this file is getting open in the browser itself but what i want to do is i want to download this file whenever a user click on the file name it should get rather than opening into a new tab it should be downloaded so in our next video we will be seeing these two functionalities that's all for now in this video and if you like the content please consider subscribing to my channel thank you